Today we're going to look at the difference between complete and incomplete proteins and the public health implications of the same. My name is Sibirio Bogo, I'm a medical doctor and specialist in public health medicine. I'm also the host of Happy Birthday Wellness Quiz, your health promotion and disease uh, prevention podcast brought to you by Kike Afia. Here is a short quiz for which I will share the answer at the end. Which one of the following is not a complete protein? A. Beef B. Grains C. Soybeans D. Milk E. Eggs Okay, so proteins play a very important role in our diet. Uh, the main function of proteins is to build and repair body tissues. Uh, half of the body's protein is used to form skeletal muscle and if you don't eat enough proteins uh, the, then it becomes difficult to replace the wear and tear on the body tissues. Proteins just like fats and carbohydrates also provide us with energy that is 4 calories uh, per gram. Now amino acids are the building blocks of proteins so sometimes when you hear the term amino acids you're basically referring to proteins. So there are about 20 amino acids, nine of which are so are essential. That means they can't be made by the body and they must be obtained from the diet. Uh, there are other, the other 11 are non-essential, meaning they are made from essential amino acids and carbohydrates. It means that if you don't consume enough of the essential amino acids, then you don't make the non-essential ones and then you become deficient in protein. Now, you also have probably come across the term conditional non-essential. So ordinarily, they are made by the body, that is, they are non-essential, except during illness or stress when they become uh, conditional essential uh, amino acids. So this distinction has serious public health implications on diet and nutrition. So what are the differences between complete and incomplete proteins? So complete proteins are the ones that contain all the nine essential amino acids. I said they are essential because they must be consumed in the diet. So if you consume a, a complete protein, then you are getting all the essential amino acids. And that means you are able, is able to make the, the, the non-essential and then you have a balance in terms of uh, amino acids. So the complete ones do not contain uh, uh, the complete ones do not contain all the essential amino acids. Now the second distinction is that complete proteins come mostly from animal food sources, whereas incomplete proteins come from plant sources. Now this doesn't mean that plant sources are inferior to animal uh, protein sources. It only means you just need to know how to combine various plant sources. For you to to get all the essential amino acids so examples of complete protein include meat uh, fish poultry and eggs as well as dairy products such as milk, uh, cheese and eggs uh, examples of complete uh, incomplete proteins are grains legumes such as beans lentils and dry beans nuts and seeds as well as uh, wheat so basically they are mostly plant sources so that means that one animal product alone can supply all the essential amino acids. So for example, if I consume an egg, I get all the nine essential amino acids. If I consume meat, I get all the nine essential amino acids. However, if I consume, for example, bread or I consume uh, beans uh, I, uh, alone, I don't get all the essential amino acids. Uh, so for incomplete proteins, all the essential amino acids can be obtained by only consuming a variety of uh, plant uh, sources of diet. Now there's one exception to this rule. Uh, soybeans is the only complete protein from a plant source. Now you may also have heard about things like uh, quinoa, buckwheat, hemp seed, and amaranth. Now these ones are complete proteins, however, uh, there's something we call the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score scale. Uh, these four do not score 1.0 on this scale, uh, but they're also considered as complete uh, proteins. So, so this gives you the summary. Basically, I said animal sources will give you complete proteins. 
and then plant-based sources will basically be in, uh, these ones are, are complete uh, but the true complete one is mainly uh, soy now if you like biochemistry these are the names of the essential amino acids are uh, things like histidine uh, leucine lysine methionine valine so there are about nine as i mentioned uh, the uh, non-essential are uh, basically uh, 11. I said uh, they can be grouped into non-essential non, non or conditional. Uh, things like alanine, aspartic acid, uh, glycine, uh, cysteine, serine. So these are the names if you enter in the biochemistry. But what's important is now the public health implications. So assume I'm consuming mostly a plant-based diet either because I'm a, I'm a vegan or because that's what I can afford. How do I get all the essential amino acids uh, from plant sources? The idea is to combine any two groups for complementation. So if I combine a grain and a legume or a grain and a nuts or vegetables and grains, then I get complete uh, protein intake in my diet. For example, beans and rice or for example, peanut butter and bread uh, uh, beans, bean soup and uh, cornmeal mash. So that those, those combinations will give you a uh, full, full complete protein intake. So it doesn't mean that plant proteins, or proteins are inferior at all. It's how you combine them. So back to our quiz, which of the following is not a complete protein? Uh, the answer is B. We said complete proteins are mainly animal sources, a plant sources are uh, incomplete proteins so thank you very much for listening this podcast was brought to you by kike afia my name is Sibiri Obogo. i'm a medical doctor and public health specialist i will rely on well wishes to bring you this uh, podcast and you can support us by either liking sharing as well as subscribing to my youtube channel you can also support us using the mp satil number 766 500 or using the uh, m pesa number 0720 95 82 50 until next time bye bye